Ugh. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Asa and I'm super excited because it's new tool day. This is my new, oh God, I'm winded. This thing's like 35 kilograms shipped. I don't know what that is in freedom units, but it's pretty heavy. All right, after almost a year, I finally received my pre-order for a Prusa XL5 tool head. I'm super excited. In today's video, I'm gonna open, unbox, and assemble. I'm gonna do some test prints and then I'll give you my initial review. I'm hoping this all goes well because when I was carrying this down into my shop, which is in my basement, I lost my grip and actually dropped it down the stairs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Clearly, this must be staged. Nope, I took a camera, I set it up at the bottom of the stairs, I was gonna explain that it's bulky and heavy, and then I ended up just recording this embarrassing moment. I have no excuses. I've got a dolly, I've got a spouse, I've got neighbors, I've got friends, and instead I just couldn't wait and decided to try and carry it down myself, which was clearly a bad idea. Fortunately, as I've mentioned in all of my Prusa product review videos, the shipping packaging is excellent, so I'm fairly optimistic that this survived very well. If I did damage it, I'll let you know how that goes with customer support. Well, I think that's plenty of intro. Let's get to unboxing. Well, good news. It looks like the only casualty from my drop test is a small printed part. So I'll kick off one of these on my Mark IV while I read the instructions and figure out how to assemble. Okay, here we have to take another break. It couldn't be more clear in the instructions. There's a left side and a right side, and it's actually really important which Z motor module you use. Now, I screwed this up. I don't know how I managed it. I looked at the instructions like three times, and essentially I got them backwards. This becomes a problem later when you're mounting the heat bed assembly to these heat bed mounts. I'm jumping ahead to a few hours later in the assembly, and here I'm trying to mount the heat bed. And you'll notice these little heat bed mounts don't line up correctly. And instead of being smart and realizing I was doing something wrong, I just torqued the heat bed down to the mounts and ended up bending one of the linear bearings. Now, fortunately, this wasn't catastrophic. Prusa support was really helpful and I was able to fix this pretty quickly, but they had to send a replacement part. I had to pay about 200 bucks to get it shipped and it slowed me down quite a bit, but fortunately it was all recoverable and Prusa was excellent. Okay, now back to chronological order in the build. At this point, the two Z motor assemblies, so the stepper motors, linear bearings, lead screws, they're still switched. I won't notice until a couple hours later and I'll point it out when I figure it out and fix the issue. This is where I notice I've done something wrong. I'm having to torque down the bolts to hold the heat bed to the heat bed mounts way too hard. And that tells me something's not lining up. Initially, I thought this was because I dropped it and I'd bent the frame or something like that. But eventually I looked closely enough at the instructions that I realized, nope, I've switched it and done something wrong. 
Then when I removed the heat bed assembly to figure out how to rectify the error, that's when I noticed I damaged and bent one of the linear bearings. I took the heat bed off, and here's where I realized the linear bearing was damaged on the right side. This should slide easily, and it clearly doesn't. Fortunately, Prusa expects that some people will have to replace this module, and they give pretty good instructions, so I was able to buy the replacement linear bearing and just remove the bearing without having to remove the entire assembly. That would have taken a couple hours, it would have been a huge pain. Also, instead of completely disassembling the two Z motor assemblies, I was just able to swap the mounts for the heat bed from the left side to the right to correct my error from earlier, and I didn't have to completely disassemble the printer to do this. So that was nice, saved me quite a bit of time. So it was straightforward just to swap out the linear bearing, put the heat bed back on, and then $200 later, I was back to where I was two days earlier. Great, it's time to power this thing on for the first time and do the initial setup calibration, and then we'll do some test prints. I had good results from this five color stringing test I found on printables, just some minimal stringing at the top of these cones. I also printed the planetary gearbox, one of the default test prints for the five tool head XL. It came out great. This is one of the bigger test prints that I ran and it also came out great. The surface quality was good and there was almost no stringing. Thanks so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Okay, I've spent a couple of weeks with my Prusa XL and overall I'm really pleased with it. First, I'll spend a few minutes talking about some drawbacks and complaints that I have, though overall they're quite minor. Then I'll talk about the things I love about the XL. But before I get into some of those details, I'll mention that I know a lot of folks online, number of YouTubers, people on the forums, complained about the initial versions of the Prusa XL that shipped. There were a lot of what appeared to be teething issues, beta issues. A specific complaint I heard regularly was a lot of issues with stringing. The printer was very loud. I think Prusa has done a good job of addressing these. By default, the printer ships with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle now that seems to help with stringing. A firmware update has improved things like the noise, so it's still loud, don't get me wrong, but it's not obtusely loud. For me, my XL worked great after assembly, and the only issues I had it were my own making when I made errors during assembly or during transport. So starting with the drawbacks, 
I sound a bit like a broken record here because this is the same feedback I have for essentially all of the reviews I've done of Prusa products. My biggest complaint is cost and lead time. Fortunately, some of the other products that I've reviewed, like the Prusa Mark IV and the Enclosure, those are shipping now with either short or no lead time. It's still gonna take Prusa a number of months to get production up to speed, where you can buy an XL and have it shipped within a couple of days. I expect they'll get there in six months, a year, but for now, if you want an XL, you're gonna have to wait or pay an obscene amount of money on a resale market, and I don't recommend that. This printer is cost prohibitive for a lot of people and applications. The five tool head version here costs $4,000 US shipped. For that price, you could go out and buy an okay used car. This thing is costly. In my case, I lie to myself and justify saying I'll use it for content and it'll pay for itself, enabling me to print different things for Etsy. But the reality is I just wanted a new tool and a new toy. My next complaint is that there's not currently an enclosure available from Prusa for the XL. I bought a bunch of Lexan and Angle aluminum. This is just polycarbonate sheets and aluminum angle bracket. I plan to make an enclosure for this and I'll probably make a video on that in a couple of weeks. I would have liked to have had an enclosure essentially right out of the box. Kind of back to the price thing at this price point, it's a bit crazy to me that you can't get an enclosure included. It's nice that it's kind of semi-enclosed by design, but the reality is I'm going to need to get this enclosed so that I can do better prints and things like ASA, polycarbonate, help improve things like warp and draft. Also, I prefer to keep things like fumes and particles enclosed if I'm printing out of ABS or a carbon fiber polycarbonate blend. So far, I've only printed PLA and PETG on my XL. I assume this will do great work of ASA and polycarbonate blends. I print those regularly on my Mark III and Mark IVs, but since I don't have the enclosure, I haven't had a chance yet to try those out on the XL. Another thing to note is that the XL is just that. It's massive, it's heavy. You're gonna need a lot of benchtop space to store and use this. You need vertical space for all the tool changers and the filament routing. You actually need quite a lot of room to assemble the semi-assembled kit. I had parts and boxes all over the place. This took up a good 12 by 12 area in my basement to assemble. At the end of the day, it, it kind of is what it is. It needs to be as big as it is so that you can achieve the print volume. It's heavy so that you have a good rigid frame, but it is something that you need to plan around. A regular complaint I saw online before receiving my XL is that they're very loud. Now, I understand one of the more recent firmware updates has improved this, but it still definitely is significantly louder than my Mark III's or Mark IV's. An enclosure would certainly help with this. I also haven't bothered to try stealth mode. You can definitely mitigate this, but it's something to point out. If you plan to use this near a living space, it is quite loud and you should be aware of that. The final thing I'll mention is another side effect of the printer being as large as it is. We all know PEI sheets are technically wear items. You do need to replace them over time or service them with steel wool, or if you're really up for a challenge, you can replace the PEI film yourself. The reason I bring this up is I've done about three days of printing on my XL, and you already see marks on the PEI sheet. I'm already thinking about when I'll have to replace it, and they're quite costly. They're a lot more pricey than the PEI sheets on the Mark III or a Mark IV. I'll definitely be looking into aftermarket non prusa alternatives to see if I can save some money, but I haven't looked into this yet. Well, as you can tell, I'm kind of grasping at straws with the cons. I really like my XL and I'm glad I bought it. If you have a business plan that requires multicolor, multi-material, or large format printing, I definitely recommend this. The first thing I need to talk about is how impressed I am overall with the service and assembly. So like I touched on earlier, I damaged my XL in two ways. First, I dropped it down the stairs and broke apart. Second, I bent one of the linear bearings and needed to get a replacement part. I've complained a lot about Prusa and their logistics, but in this case, I'm really impressed. I got on a chat with Prusa support, they told me exactly what part number to get, and I had it in my shop within about 65 hours. That's from the Czech Republic to the United States. It was costly, but reasonable, similar to the manufacturer price. I also really appreciate that I thought I needed to replace more parts, and the Prusa support person I was working with had me do a couple of simple mechanical checks, a couple of fit checks, and they determined no, it was really just the linear bearing that was bent, the rest of the heat bed assembly and the heat bed supports was fine and didn't need to be replaced. So thank you Prusa support for helping me fix my assembly mistake and for making sure I didn't waste money buying extra service parts that I didn't need. I've talked about packaging in all of my Prusa reviews and I'm super impressed now that I've done my own drop test. Another thing I'm really pleased with is the print quality. It's at least as good, if not better, than my Mark IV. 
One thing that I've noticed that it's actually better at is aligning seams. There's a bunch of prints that I print regularly for my Etsy store, so I have a pretty good idea of the quality to expect from my Mark III and Mark IV, and I was pleasantly surprised that the XL actually seemed to do a little better. Another thing I appreciate is the filament waste is reduced as much as possible for multicolor prints. Yes, you can do some clever things like wiping on infill, but for the prints that I do, this application doesn't work particularly well. This is an example wipe tower from multicolor prints that I regularly do. These are from little traffic cones, and it's significantly lighter than the waste material from my Mark III and MMU III combo. I'm really impressed with Prusa Slicer and the firmware's ability to reduce the waste for multicolor prints as much as possible, and I plan to spend some time redesigning some of my more common multicolor prints to see if I can reduce waste even further. Of course, one of the main reasons I got the XL was for large prints, and I'm really pleased with the quality. I haven't had any issues with warping. The quality is consistent and quite high across the entire print bed. It's really nice that this is already replacing multi-part prints that today I have to print separately in glue, and this is really improving my workflow for some of my Etsy items. In short, I'm happy with my purchase, and I plan to keep using this over the coming months and years. I'll definitely make a follow-up video if I learn anything new, and like I said, I'll probably make a video when I build an enclosure for this. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, and consider subscribing to my channel for more content on building, making, and crafting. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.